When we calculate WAC, weighted average cost of capital, we use the market value, not book value. Therefore, we will use the market value of debt and the market value of equity. Debt could be loan or bonds, while equity could be preference shares or ordinary shares. Ordinary shares is also called common shares and preference shares is also called preferred shares. Therefore, we could have, it depends on the company you analyze, we could have the four of them. Let's get a numerical example. ABC Limited has a market value of debt, market value of preference shares, and market value of common shares of $70 million, $30 million, and $100 million, respectively. The pre-tax cost of debt is 4%, the cost of preference shares is 6%, the cost of common shares is 8%, and the tax rate is 30%. Calculate the market value of asset, the weight of debt, weight of preference shares, weight of common shares, after tax cost of debt, pre tax WAC, after tax WAC. So let's start with the variables we have in the question. We have here market value of debt, we have the market value of preference shares, we have the market value of common shares. Then we have pre tax cost of debt, we have cost of preference share and cost of common share. Remember that for equity, both preference shares and common shares is not affected by that. The first part of the question is calculate the market value of asset. We know that market value of asset is the market value of debt plus market value of equity. Our equity here is composed of preference shares and common share. Therefore, I will get market value of debt plus market value of preference shares plus market value of common shares. So 70 million plus 30 million plus 100 million, it will give us $200 million. The next part of the question, calculate the weight of debt. Our date of debt, our weight of debt or percentage of debt or share of debt will be the market value of debt divided by the total. Remember, this total is enterprise value if we don't have cash, so enterprise value will be the same as market value of asset. So 70 divided by 200, it will give us 35%. Calculate the weight of preference share. So we will get the preference share amount divided by the total. 30 divided by 200, it will give us 15%. The next part of the question is calculate the weight of common shares or ordinary shares. So we will get the amount of common share divided by the total. 100 divided by 200, it will be 50%. Remember, the total weight or the total percentage or the total share here must be 100%, so 35% plus 15% plus 50%, it will give us 100%. The next part of the question is calculate our after-tax cost of debt or post-tax cost of debt. Our formula is our before-tax cost of debt multiplied by one minus tax rate, so it will be multiplied by one minus 30%, it will give us 2.8%. As you see here from these numbers, our before-tax cost of debt is always larger than after tax cost of debt because in our after tax cost of debt we multiply before tax cost of debt with one minus tax rate so when they will be equal if there is no taxes so both of them will be the same value which is four percent in this example the next part of the question is calculate pre-tax WAC or before tax WAC so what is the formula I need to get the percentage of debt multiplied by before tax cost of debt plus the percentage of equity multiplied by cost of equity. But here our equity is divided into two types of shares. So I need to do the same. I will get the percentage of preference shares multiplied by the cost of preference share plus the percentage of common shares multiplied by the cost of common share. So here 35% multiplied by 4%, it gives us 1.4. Plus 15% times 6%, it gives us 0.9%. Plus 50% times 8%, it gives us 4%. If we get the summation, the total will be 6.3%. Therefore, we know that our before tax or pre tax WAC is 6.3%. Our next part of the question is calculate after tax WAC or post tax WAC. So the formula will be similar to pre tax WAC. The only difference is with the cost of debt, we will use after tax cost of debt, not before tax cost of debt. Why? Because here we calculate after tax WAC and debt is tax deductible. 
which means every time we use that, we pay lower taxes. So we will get here the percentage of that multiplied by after tax cost of that. So 35% multiplied by 2.8%, it will give us 0.98%. Therefore, the first part here is 0.98%. Plus, I need to get the percentage of preference shares multiplied by the cost of preference share. It will give us 0.9. I can copy it from our before tax whack. Why? Because equity is not affected by taxes. Therefore, this part will be 0.9%. Then I will say plus the percentage of common shares multiplied by the cost of common share. It will give us 4%. I can copy it. I don't need to repeat the same formula again to save time. So this would be 4%. If you get the summation 0.98% plus 0.9% plus 4%, this will give us a total of 5.88%. And this will be our after tax whack or post tax whack. So as you see from these numbers, our before tax whack or pre tax whack is always bigger than our after tax whack or post tax whack. Why? Because our after tax whack is based on our after tax cost of debt. Consequently, it will always be lower. How many will be equal if there is no taxes? Therefore, to sum up, our after tax cost of debt will always be lower than before tax cost of debt. So we could say that our before tax cost of debt will always be larger than after tax cost of debt. The same for WAC. Our before tax WAC will always be larger than after tax WAC. When before tax cost of debt will be equal to after tax cost of debt, they will be equal if we don't have taxes. When our before tax WAC will be equal to after tax WAC, they will be equal if we don't have taxes. Remember that our before tax WAC is based on our before tax cost of debt, while our after tax WAC is based on after tax cost of debt.